Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. If you're managing people and you don't know with some level of clarity what the personal goals are of the people who work for you and how exactly they're using their job to achieve those goals, you're a supervisor and you're missing opportunities. Hi, it's Joseph and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. People have been hating managers for as long as work has existed. But what if the issue is not inherent in the manager role, but rather the way billions of people for thousands of years have related to it? In this episode, you're gonna learn the single most important thing for any manager to learn, the difference between management and supervision. And the result determines whether or not your people hate you or love you. Keep listening. The concept is part of the core of Clear and Open's teachings, and I'm very excited to offer it to you. This episode is from a recent weekly member webcast. For more information about the many benefits of Clear and Open membership and how to get the help you need in conversations like this, please go to clearandopen.com. Now let's dive in. If you have people reporting to you, you have the opportunity to be a leader but it's up to you. You are in a potentially leadership position. You're leading people, or you have the capability of leading people, but you have the choice to supervise them instead. Supervising is not leading. Making sure someone does what they're supposed to do is not leadership. It's supervising. It's babysitting. So just because on the org chart, your box is above some other people's boxes, doesn't make you a leader. You could be at the very top of an org chart of thousands of people and not be a leader. You're technically in a leadership position, but being a leader has to do with who you're being, not what you necessarily do or what your job is. So the the question is, is I would, how I'm interpreting it is, what's the, what's the difference between what a, leader is and how they're being and what and what they do and what a supervisor is being and lots of different ways to come at that one thing i would say is a a leader well uh, here's one of the most upstream um one of my teachers taught me this one of the most upstream ways of uh of describing this a real leader cultivates other leaders that's the probably the simplest way to describe it. A supervisor is interested in maintaining their own power and control. A supervisor is afraid of the people below them getting their job. A leader says, come get my job. Go for it. Let's talk about, do you you want it? Are you hungry for that? Why? Why not? What do you want? A leader does this, they, they support from underneath, they have an upper position, they have an authority, and then they serve the career of the person they're serving. Supervisors don't serve, they control. They make, make sure the stuff that needs to get done gets done. Leaders serve the person. Leaders, are, leaders ask questions like, do you want this job forever? In 10 years, do you want to be in this job? Most people will say no. Okay, what do you want to be doing in 10 years? I don't know. Think about it. Let me know next Monday when we talk again. And if they do have an answer, I want to be doing X in 10 years. Okay, cool. I love that. That inspires me. If it inspires them. If it doesn't, then maybe there needs to be more digging. That inspires me. How can you, my dear employee, use your job right now to become that which you want to be in 10 years. Because goals are not something that are in the future. If you get nothing out of today's call, hear this. This is a really cool concept. I didn't make it up. Goals are not about the future because there is no future. There's only right now. 
There is no future. Goals are not a place to go to. They're a place to come from. They're a place to come from. So think about what one of your goals is two, five, ten years from now. And feel how you maybe are orienting at it toward it so as someday that will happen. Someday I'll move toward that. And instead, think about it from a different point of view of how can I move toward that right now? How can I come from that place? What are the, what's the knowledge I need? What are the skills I need? What can I be working on right now, today, to move closer to that? That's the right orientation of goals because that brings the goal into the present where you can do something about it, not in the someday, maybe future. That's why dreams don't come true because people leave them in the future. You can't do anything in the future. You can't do anything in the future. Isn't that interesting? You can't do anything in the past, right? You can't do anything yesterday and you can't do anything tomorrow because by the time you're able to do something, It'll be right now. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? There's only the now. You can make a plan to do something, but when you do it, it'll be now. So come from your goals. And a leader says, I want to help you move toward your personal goals using your job as a vehicle to achieve those goals. That's what a leader does. And then there's a lot of downstream stuff that a leader does That supports that. But that's the headline. So let me make a a sharper distinction here because some of you maybe haven't heard this. I consider supervisor to be a dirty word because the maintaining things as the same, I consider to be inherently bad. That's supervisory. Supervisors want control and they want things to stay the same. Even if the business isn't growing in terms of volume or dollars or activity, people can be growing as people. They can be becoming more knowledgeable, more skilled, more aware. And that's what leaders care about. And they look at, the, they're responsible for the results in the business, surely, but they're looking at those results as inextricably intertwined with the development of their people. Businesses grow and people do. And someone who isn't concerned with the development of their people is supervising. And that's a form of stunting the growth of people. So please hear me. I'm, 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 I'm not holding, supervision for me isn't okay. It's dysfunctional. It's dysfunctional. If, if you're managing people and you don't know with some level of clarity what the personal goals are of the people who work for you, and how exactly they're using their job to achieve those goals, you're a supervisor. And you're missing opportunities. That's how cut and dried I I see it. Because while the leader is responsible for business results, that's a win-win. Why wouldn't you, and that's engaging the self-interest of the employee, why wouldn't you want the employee to be working on themselves, however that means to them in the context of the business. That's where engagement comes from. Where disengagement comes from is when you say, your personal life, your personal goals doesn't really matter. You're spending half of your waking hours serving the company. That's why we pay you. That creates disengagement. And you can say all what you want about sacrifice and there's no I in T-E-A-M and all that, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work because human beings are incapable of unself-interest. So when you say, take one for the team or put the team, put the group ahead of you, whether you say it out loud or just model it, either way, the impact is people shut down because they can't actually do that. So if you want 100% of yourself and 100% of the people who report to you, ask yourself, who is it that you're becoming? using your job as a tool that should be on the top of your mind every day to the degree that's not on the top of your mind is the degree to which you're disengaged. You could be digging ditches and becoming more the kind of person you want to become. Now, certainly there's a, like a Venn diagram thing. There's an overlap. There are certain jobs that are better suited toward the kind of development that you want than others. 
Would it be challenging to, to grow in the way you want to grow, digging ditches? Perhaps. Probably the job that you're in now is a better fit for you than digging ditches. But if we teleported you into another world where you were digging ditches, you've got a choice. You can go, woe is me, I'm trapped digging ditches. I was thinking about this this morning. P- people who are in prison, right? There's two kinds of prisoners. There's prisoners who educate themselves and get in great shape. And there's all sorts of things you can do. And then there are people who don't do anything. The choice is completely yours. They, even in prison, there's freedom to be able to, you know, do what people do. Get law degrees, even that happens. It's rare, but it happens. That's a kind of radical self-interest and hunger for yourself. I don't care how bad your boss is, how not a good fit your job is for you, how not a good fit the business is for you. I don't care what you're doing. You can be growing. Now, your manager ought to be helping you do that, but even if they're not, you can do it alone. It's not ideal, but you can do it alone. Probably many of you have had a job before that was a bad fit. Your boss was kind of crazy. You know, the environment was really dysfunctional. And you learned a lot anyway. How did you do that? You did it all by yourself. Not ideal, but we're capable of that. And if your manager hasn't asked you about what your personal goals are and how you can be using your job to move closer to them, don't wait. Bring it up. Hey, boss, I want to have a conversation about my personal goals and the ways in which I want to develop because I want you to help me become that person. Don't wait. Might that upset them? Too bad. Don't caretake them. Don't wait. Most managers are waiting for their employees to take steps like that anyway because they can't spoon feed everything to you. That moment there where you say, well, they say, well, I'm not going to do this unless I, unless I get more money. And you said, then the manager has to figure out a way to get them to want to do it anyway. That's supervision. That's supervision. Because it avoids the conversation of why are you even here? That's a moving the cheese around in the maze kind of thing. How do I trick this employee? I'm exaggerating a little bit. How do I get this employee to want to do it anyway? The question is, why don't they want to do it in the first place? If the employee has engaged self-interest, then the question is only, okay, you want to raise? Let's talk about how you can earn that by providing more value to your position. But not for me or for the company, for you. What are you interested in doing? What are you working on between you and you? Well, who do you want to be in 10 years? And how can, what additional responsibilities could you take on that would help you get there? Do you see how that completely disappears, the money? Supervisors think in terms of money. Employees don't work for money. All of the management consultant studies show this. It's like number three or four on the list. So when an employee says, I want more money, most of the time, that's not what they're talking about. What they're really saying is something like, I don't feel valued, I'm not engaged, I'm bored, something else. And money could also be a factor in there, but it's not the only thing. But supervisors only hear the money part. What needs to happen in a situation like that is the employee becomes a leader. You want more money? Cool. Let's talk about how you can make that happen. Let's talk about how you can become a leader in this moment. Because the the mentality in people like that is very often like that there's just endless amounts of money that the business owner is like sitting on like a dragon in a Tolkien novel, you know, just like going, ha ha ha, money, there's so much, right? And the employee's like, yeah, I want some of that. Not understanding profit dynamics and cash flow and all of that and how it works. That money is something you earn, you don't just get it. And that alone, just the idea of like, let's talk about what it means to earn money. What an incredibly enlightening conversation that could be that would develop that person in that moment. That's what leaders do. Leaders step back and go, how is this person relating to work, money, themselves, their goals, and where might they be stuck? Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. 
Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Be sure to visit clearandopen.com for the latest tools, articles, and free resources to help you on your journey. Thanks for listening and bye for now.